Hey, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. Yes, I know I'm late putting this video out or making this video, but I thought I would share a cool new rose petal scrunchie idea. I don't know if anyone has done this, but I thought it was cool to do, so I did it. And I'm going to give you a tutorial on how you can do it at home too. So stay tuned. See you in a moment. Scrunchy Club. I am the Scrunchy Creator, Lamiel, and for those of you that are new, welcome to the club. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, today's video, you heard right, I am going to teach you how to make rose petal scrunchies. So, before I get started, let's of course check out my OMG Scrunchy Club look today. I am rocking the OMG Scrunchy Club mini barrette in the name Bella. I want to say it's Bella. Uh, I think it is. I'm almost 99% sure that this is Bella. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with today's video slash tutorial. So the first thing you'll need, of course, is a sewing machine. You can do this by hand, but it's a lot easier to do it with a sewing machine. And for this particular project, I decided to use organza. So organza is a nice lightweight fabric. That is sheer, so I went with organza. You can also use chiffon if you have some sheer chiffon as well. Um, and of course, rose petals. So I went to Walmart this morning. Today is actually Monday, January 31st. So this video and everything that is being done in this video is being done today, and hopefully I'll post it today. So I bought these rose petals. It comes with 200 rose petals in a box from Walmart. And I got red and pink. So my goal is to stuff this casing here. I went with my normal measurements that I use for my scrunchies. So I will not be sharing the particular measurements for this video. But in another video when I make a different measurement for something. I will be sure to share that. Um, so I have my fabric. I took a few of the petals out of the box already. My elastic. My name tag of course and a bodkin. So I am going to attempt to change the camera angle so that you could see this project being done live. Well, not live, but live to me later for you. But so that you can see this project being done. And if you want, you can follow along with me. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the project and I'm going to change the camera angle. Also, I plan on doing a few more videos right after this one. So if you see me wearing the same outfit, which you will be seeing me wear the same outfit, I am doing this all in one day, so I have more than one shirt. But anywho, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, I just realized in the video, in this video that you're watching, I call this white fabric chiffon, but I'm actually using organza for this project here. So if you, you're wanting to get the same fabric that I'm using, I am using organza and not chiffon. Chiffon fabric will work as well as tulle if you want to use tulle. Any sheer fabric that you're able to see through uh, to be able to see what you're putting inside of the scrunchie will work. But just in case you're wondering, the particular fabric that I'm using is once again organza. It's a lot stiffer than chiffon. It, it, it holds its shape a little bit better. But I just wanted to let you know that. So enjoy this video and the tutorial. Leave me a comment in the comment box below. Thank you. So hopefully this is a good angle for you to see what I'm doing. So I am going to go with a half inch of a seam allowance, which is pretty much this the width of this foot here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to line my ends together. And I always put in my tag first, so I sew the shorter ends together first. Make a seam for that. And don't forget to back stitch. So let's hope this is a close enough picture for you, close enough footage. So I'm going to start, going to back stitch, and somewhere towards the middle is where I insert my tag. So I'm going to push my machine back just a little bit more so that you can get a better view of where I'm working or what I'm working with. 
So hopefully this works for you. And here we go. So at this point, I'm going to do my tag. So I have tags that are made of ribbon and the company that I bought them from is called O. Let's see. Hold on just a second. The company that I bought them from is Ribbon by Design. I was giving you another company for some ribbon that I purchased. Um, and since this is a sheer fabric here, I am actually going to burn my edges. So with satin ribbon or ribbon in general, uh, gros, grow grain ribbon, I call it gros grain, but it's pronounced grow grain. Um, you can melt the ends close. So I'll just take a lighter, light the ends and the bottom will be melted together. So I am going to go get a lighter and show you that. So just a second. Okay, so I have my lighter here and now I'm just going to light the ends. And now it will not fray. So when the customer decides to wash this, it won't fray. I'm trying to focus here. Okay, so it won't fray when they wash it. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm going to line this up with the foot. So if you look in the middle of your sewing machine, sewing machine's foot there is a space right here where where the needle passes through let's see that little space right in there where the needle passes through so i always try to line my tag up with the letters right close to the edge of where that gap or space is right there in the middle and then i just stitch my tag down so let's do that now okay so here we go if you hear people laughing in the background that's because my kids are downstairs and they're playing so sometimes they get loud so I hope everyone's doing well today it's been a while since I've posted a video I've been commissioned to do work for some other projects and after I taught my art classes today, I was like, I have to do a video. So if I can just knock out a few videos, I can do that and catch up or uh, be past where I need to be as far as making my videos for the week. So now I have that where I want it to go. I kind of hold it down just a little as I stitch it. Well, you can't see it because my hand's in the way. And I'm going to stitch right over that tag. Okay, so maybe if I shift my hands down just a little. Okay, so I need to shoot a TikTok while I'm doing this. So I am trying to multitask today. So I am going to attempt to do a YouTube and a TikTok at the same time. I've done it before. So I'm going to do it again today. And in some parts of the video, uh, I am going to actually speed up. So this next step where I sew my scrunchie casing, casing closed, I am actually going to speed this step up because if you've seen it once, you've seen it a million times. So there's my tag right in there. So now that I have the tag in place, I'm going to show you how I like to fold my scrunchie to prepare it for sewing. So right now the tag is on the outside. Whenever you're sewing a scrunchie casing, you want the right sides facing downward. So, or inside, I'm going to flip this like so. Now my tag is upside down or facing downward. But what I like to do is actually put the tag side down like so. And then I will actually fold the bottom of this fabric up, the middle part right here, and fold the top part downward. So I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm folding the top in and the bottom up or down and up. And then this little seam here, I make sure I find the center on both sides of it, the center here, the center there, and then I put them together and I take my little clamp here and I clamp it. 
So now when I get ready to sew it, my seam should still be in the same spot. So it make, to make sure that the seam is in the same spot. And then when I'm sewing, of course I'm not holding it up to sew, but I'm holding it up so that I can show you what I do. I push the inside inward a little bit more because you don't want to make the mistake of having the inside of your scrunchie in the section where you're going to sew it and then it's just not going to be a scrunchie. It's just going to be some fabric sewn together. And you're going to be frustrated because you're going to have to get a seam ripper to take it apart. And depending on the fabric that you use, you may end up putting holes in your fabric. So now I have it like that. You can see, I know this is sheer fabric, but you could still see through it. And I will just sew along the outside edge of this right here. I'm going to try to leave maybe like a two inch opening i'm not really sure because these rose petals that i am using on the box it says they're two by two so two inches across and two inches up and down horizontal and vertical so i'm going to go ahead and sew this now and more than likely i will speed up the sewing process of me sewing this so that you don't have to watch it in real time okay so i placed the fabric under the sewing machine foot I go towards the edge. I take the fabric all the way to the edge, which is roughly about a half an inch, this little foot here. And I will just sew starting here all the way around. And as I get towards the end of where I'm sewing, I just pull the center through. I will be sure to try to angle the camera so that you can see what I'm talking about. But if you're unsure, there are plenty of scrunchy tutorial videos. I think in some of my older videos, I actually show myself doing this. Um, so if I forget to show it, please check one of those videos as a reference. So I'm going to start stitching and my machine does a back stitch automatically for me, but I like to make sure my scrunchies are secure because I don't want anyone calling me saying, Hey, my scrunchie came apart, which has not happened yet, probably because I back stitch a few times. So I back stitch maybe two to three times. So this is my third time. Um, so now I'm ready to go. So I will just sew this all the way down. When I get to the point where my clip is, I just remove it and I hold my hand there to make sure the fabric is stabilized. And then I sew over that section. And most of the times I do a back stitch over where the two seams meet just to make sure it's secure. And I keep going. Right here, I let this go up a little bit further than normally so that I could show you what I'm talking about. So I have the outside, which is what I'm sewing right now, and the inside, I stick my hand inside and I hold the opposite end of the scrunchie off camera, you can't see it. And then I just pull towards myself. And now the casing has um, been stretched out a little bit further and now I can continue to sew. Okay, oops, I said I was going to leave a two inch space. Guess what, I forgot. So <laughs> here is the space that I have to stick these roses in. So I guess I'm going to have to fold them and stick them in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to flip this inside out and stuff the roses on the inside. Fingers crossed that when I stick them in, they will open back up. Um, because I want them is sitting in the scrunchie like this and not like this. So hopefully it will work. If not, I will just have to go in and rip some of this, um, sewing out and expand the gap here. So let's hope that this works. Here we go. Okay. So now that the casing is done, um, what I can do is snip some of this excess fabric here um I'm actually not going to do that in this video when I sew my scrunchies if I have extra strings or pieces of thread hanging through sheer scrunchies because you can see through them I tend to go in and trim the edges up a little bit but 
I am not selling this. I will likely give this to one of my daughters. So where I have that little, I don't even think it's an inch opening. It's probably three fourths of an inch opening. Where I have that little opening, I am actually going to stick my fingers through there and grab the inside tubing, which is inside of here, and pull it out. Pull it through that hole, just like so. Now, here is the part that I am unsure about since <laughs> I have not made a sample of this. I don't know if I should put the scrunchy elastic in first or if I should do the roses. Um, I'm going to put some of the rose petals in. So I'm going to fold them in half because I feel like if I put the elastic in, it's going to be scrunched and then my rose petals won't have enough space to open. So my thinking is if I put them in while the casing is still open, they will open. Look at that. So we have one rose petal in there. Woohoo! I feel so accomplished right now. So I am going to go ahead and stuff these in here. You can watch, but I'll probably speed this part up because I am not sure how long this will take. So here goes warp speed of me stuffing roses. So I'm trying to like make kind of a pattern. So I'll go red, pink, uh, then pink. Well, I should have just done one side, but hey, I don't know. I told you we're doing this together. <coughs> Excuse me. So since I have red right here, I'm going to go with pink next. I noticed in the pink box, it came with some sheer pink rose petals as well as these rose petals. Didn't see any in the red box. And then I have these red petals. So I'm just going to do a combination and try to just put them in in some kind of pattern, I guess. Um, so that I don't have a bunch of red on one side. And of course, if you'd like, you can make a scrunchie with only red rose petals or you can do a scrunchie with only pink rose petals or you can do hey try half and half do one side half red one side half pink i don't know see what happens this is a project trial and error i'm not even sure how many scrunchies to put not scrunchies i'm not even sure how many rose petals to put in here so i don't know you don't know we don't know we're just going to try it and see what happens i'm pretty sure it's not going to be like a fell project because it's nothing tedious, it's nothing hard, it's nothing dangerous. Um, just stuffing rose petals. So, I will see you in a moment with some more commentary. So I didn't think to count the rose petals. So before I get too far, I think I'm going to stop and count to see how many I have. That way I can tell you how many I used, but of course you can use as many as you'd like. So they're all just getting jumbled up right now. So I'm guessing I will have to kind of move them around when I put the elastic in. I am not sure how this is going to work but I'm pretty sure the end result is going to be amazing. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. So I decided to stop at 27 rose petals. I will tell you why. Because my space is so small, it's taking a long time to put one petal in at a time. So if I do this again, which I likely will, um, I will make the space much larger. And by doing so, you can stuff more rose petals in at a time. So now that I have 27, hopefully it doesn't look pathetic with only 27 rose petals um, inside of it. But if it does, before I sew it closed, I will add some more. 
off camera and then show you the final result. Okay, so now I'm taking my bodkin and my elastic. I am going to thread or insert the bodkin through the opening right here. Oops, that is not it. There it is. Nope. Okay. Don't do what I just did. I just lost the spot. Normally what I do is I take this clip, clip here, and where my hole is, I will just stick it there so I'll know where it is. But I forgot to do that today. So I found it, and now I'm going to insert the bodkin, push it all the way through. Some of the petals are like jumbled together. But I guess that doesn't matter since they're getting scrunched together right now. But you can still see them as I'm bodkining. I don't even think that's a word, but it's going to be a word today. As I am bodkining the bodkin through the scrunchy casing. So I'm tying my elastic. And if you don't know, I sew my elastic after I tie it. So now you know. I am going to pull my sewing machine close to me. You don't have to see this on camera. Um, but trust me, I'm sewing. You will be able to hear it in a moment. And I will show you what I do. When I finish. So I just sew over the elastic a few times. Like so. And I backstitch. And then what I like to do is I just cut the excess string. And sometimes some of the elastic that is past my string. Now, let's do the fun part. The fluffing. Okay, so... Oops, doing it again. Before you sew your casing shut, if you're not going to sew it shut right away, use something, a safety pin or something so that you can find the hole so that you know where you need to sew. And I'm going to try to shift some of these petals into other folds of the scrunchie because look at this section. There are no petals in this section. So... I am going to move the petals. <laughs> okay, yes, I am not a singer. So, more than likely, you may not even hear me sing that little bit if I speed this video up. I don't know. I don't want to do too much editing. I just want to go and drop it and post it. So, I have a bunch of petals bunched up in this section also. So, I'm just trying to open the casing up just a little bit. Some of the petals I'm still holding in place with my thumb and my pointer, which is called a pincher, pincher here, so that some will stay in that section because I don't want all of them to roll down to the next section. And then I'll leave those there and then go to the next section and hold maybe one or two petals in this section, like so, and then shake, 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 so that the petals will roll to the next section. So, it looks like this is going to take a while. But, I'm going to get it done. And you're going to see this video today. I don't care if it's midnight when I post it. You're going to see it. Okay, so... Well, I guess that wouldn't be today then, huh? That would be tomorrow. But, anywho. I am just moving the petals. See? They're coming apart. And then I just want to take that one... To the next section and so forth this is pretty cool Ooh, what if i find other petals to do this with so tip if you don't have any rose petals or access to rose petals but you do have satin fabric guess what you can make satin flower petals too so you can cheat by just making circles cut them out in circles maybe like a two inch circle and then just stick them inside and say they're rose petals um, these aren't real rose petals. They're fabric rose petals. So washing this scrunchie will not be a problem, my friend. You can wash it just as you wash your other scrunchies. But always remember, do not, I repeat, do not stick your scrunchies in the dryer. You know why? Elastic is rubber. And when you heat this type of rubber up, it gets soft and it will break don't want to walk around with a broken scrunchie as a matter of fact if your elastic breaks you're just going to have a long casing around your head so what it looked like before i put the elastic in that's what you'll be wearing my friend on your head 
Okay, so I am going to stop fluffing it right at that point. So here is what I have right now. Maybe tomorrow it's dark outside now. I can go and put it on my mannequin's head and do a quick little video of it. Oh, I forgot to record the rest of this for my TikTok. So I guess I won't be posting this on TikTok. Um, so there we have it. I am going to go ahead and sew this casing shut. Then I will pull my mannequin around so that we can see how she wears this lovely scrunchie. Since my hair is like this, I can't put this on. Well, I can put it on. We'll just see. Let's see what it looks like. I won't have a nice fluffy ponytail, but I can wear this scrunchie. So I am going to sew this shut. Now, my friend, look inside of this scrunchie. There is some black lint with chiffon, especially sheer scrunchies or sheer material. You can see through it. So I'm just going to take my hand and pull that out. It may have come off of my tablecloth or something. And now I'm going to tuck everything in and sew this little lady closed. Okay. So here we go. I'm trying to think of my next video to shoot right after this. I have like five or six lined up, but I want to shoot. If I can shoot five or six tonight, that would be great. But okay, here we go. I am just uh, sticking my casing back on the sewing machine and I'm just going to backstitch and sew that little opening closed. So always remember to backstitch, backstitch, baby. Okay, so now I am cutting the extra string off. And voila, we have a rose. The first thing that came to my mind was rose infested scrunchie, but that does not sound good. An infestation is not positive. So we have a, what can I name this? Um, a stuffed scrunchie with the roses? A rose petal stuffed scrunchie, something like that. If anyone has a suggestion for the name, let me know. Um, it reminds me of, not the scrunchie, but the rose petals. Beauty and the Beast. The Beast, when he was not falling in love, his petals were falling off of the rose. So each day, I don't know if it was each day. I don't even know how long he was a beast. But I just remember his rose petals falling and the rose was like slowly dying. And he had to find love before the rose petals were all dead or off the rose. Or he would be a beast forever. I think that's what Beauty and the Beast was about. Something like that. Um, but yeah, that is the scrunchie. Let me know what you think. I will do a different camera angle so that you can see it, oops, better on the table. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Let's see how it looks in my head. Okay. Not so much with this, uh, with my hair like this, but I can rock it. Um, if my hair wasn't crimped up like this, but anywho, uh, I guess I want to say thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell for notification. Leave some comments of some scrunchy ideas that you'd like me to try. I'm actually thinking of making a scrunchie with food inside of it, but I have to think of what kind of food you can wear that will not mess up when it's hot outside or when you get wet because you don't want sticky foods in your hair. I was thinking like, you know, when we were little kids, we would make macaroni necklaces and give them to our moms for like Mother's Day or something. I was thinking maybe macaroni, but guess what happens when macaroni gets wet? It gets soggy. So you don't want to be walking around with macaroni noodles in your head. Elbow noodles are actually what they're called. Um, so give me some ideas of cool things to do since of course, making a scrunchie is always the same. I'm trying to think of something for my YouTube channel to be innovative, fun, and creative which all pretty much mean the same thing, to give you all, instead of just the boring, let me sew this scrunchie with this fabric, and voila, you have another scrunchie. One million scrunchie that you've seen a million different times, just a different type of fabric. But I do have some ideas. In my next video, I have something new coming up. I don't know if anyone has made this scrunchie. 
As a matter of fact, the next few scrunchies that I am making, I haven't even looked on YouTube to see if anyone's making these. So if they are, let me know so I can see how they're doing theirs. Maybe they're doing theirs different from the way that I'm doing mine. But once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because if you keep on listening to me, I will keep on going all day. So I'm going to stop here, but stick around a little uh, so I can show you how this scrunchie came out in a close up. So thanks. Have a great day. Bye. This bye doesn't mean go, but okay, stay. So here is a close up of this scrunchie that is infused with rose petals or stuffed with rose petals or the rose petal scrunchie. So this is a close up of what it looks like on the table. I tried to decorate the table a little bit for you so that you could see these lovely rose petals here. But yeah, that's a close up of the tag. And inside you can see the rose petals. So the next shot I will do is actually putting it on a mannequin's head so that you can see what it looks like. Here is the scrunchie on my mannequin's head. I think it came out pretty cool if I ask myself, which I did. How did it come out, self? Pretty cool is what I said, pretty cool. So tomorrow I will likely go and take a picture of this outside so I can see what it actually looks like in the daylight, my friend. So let's turn her around and see what the back is looking like. So there you have it. A rose petal scrunchie. Okay, that's the end of the, oops, blooper. Okay, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.